Yes. Um, yeah. What what I find uh, interesting is that this graph is actually misleading because it makes it look like that EVs and FSC is so small when actually yeah. they're multi-trillion dollar markets. It's just because these other markets are so giant, so big that it kind of dwarfs this. But if even if you, like you said, don't do these things and just focus on this. What I also love, thank you for your description of how it evolved through the different um, categories of segments of electric vehicles. But now Tesla is expanding into the broader segment of transportation and transportation as a service. So they're getting into Tesla Semi. And if you actually daisy chain these Tesla Semis, you can actually replicate the cost of a train. Um, and and that this is where we're headed towards is basically conquer electric vehicles, which is massive, then get into transportation, but then even just transportation as a service, which is robotaxi, it's massive. So you, you've given us a good uh, background of kind of the the, the, the the factories, the manufacturing capabilities, but now they're headed to software. And then quickly, can you, can you kind of explain, some people are saying, why did you have energy after FSD? Some people believe that energy can actually happen sooner. It's easier They've already proven it in multiple, um, uh, you know, utilities across the world. They, they're creating these mega packs is much simpler. They've proven it with Lathrop that they can just replicate these factories now versus FSD. While they've made huge improvements and huge progress in, uh, for us who are testing Robotaxi, we can actually see it happening in front of our eyes. But people think that it's going to be, you know, five years or even decades away. What's your comment of which one will come sooner? Yeah, so a few comments on um, Tesla Energy. So first off, Tesla Energy by nature is a much bigger market just because the energy markets are are bigger than transportation and uh, you know hardware or vehicles, et cetera. Uh, energy markets are huge. I mean, the world runs on energy. Without energy, everything, the economy crashes. We don't have civilization as we know it. Um, <clears throat> energy is one of those like key fundamental drivers of economy and progress. And so... Um, what Tesla's trying to do with transitioning the world to renewable energy is huge. It's massive. And you know, there's there's different ways to look at this. I think one way is you could say, oh, you know, just transition the world to solar, um, to batteries, renewable energy sources. And I think that's one way um Tesla will focus and will do it. I mean, that's part of the master plan part three. Um <clears throat> I think there are some possibilities. Um, later on, when as Tesla gains more and more market share in the energy markets and more profitability, what are they going to do with all that money? And I think they're going to reinvest into R and D, and they're going to reinvest into <clears throat> the best battery technology, the best you know, energy generation technologies. Um, and I think there could be a case to be made that in the let's say twenty thirty to twenty forty timeframe that if Tesla has, let's say they are investing billions of dollars into new technologies, that that where would the next kind of breakthrough in technology, in energy technology come from, right? On the generation or the storage side. And it's likely going to be Tesla if, you know, they're executing well. And if that's the case, then you could see kind of this snowball effect where Tesla is able to get more and more of that energy market, not just because of traditional products and the way we we think of it is but by introducing truly innovative truly revolutionary products that other people just can't copy it's just they're so far ahead that's the kind of scenario where there's a it's just a snowball runaway case right where tesla becomes the dominant energy player in the world um and i could see it the nothing is 100 guaranteed um but that to me is a strong possibility if Tesla executes on the right pathway. So where what is that pathway right to that point? To me, it's you're you're needing to to build your energy business and your energy aspirations off of matching where the demand and is in the market. So the problem right now with the markets is that a few things. One is um, with energy generation and uh, and storage, um, demand is at a certain point, and Tesla's meeting that demand with their products. Um, at different points, you know, it's like, you know, and Tesla will grow with that as the price of, let's say, 
storage goes down, then the demand will increase. Um, and this is kind of what's going to happen over the next you know few decades as the energy sustainable energy prices go down, everything's going to shift over um, to sustainable energy. <clears throat> now, there's a few things about this. First, it takes time for the prices to come down significantly enough for the demand to, you know, to, to continue to increase. Second, this is a hardware business, meaning um, it's it's a tough thing. It, it, it takes time to bring down costs. It's not like a software thing where overnight you're just, you know, slashing 50% costs off of this or that. Another thing is this is a, a very highly bureaucratic field where mm -hmm. in order to secure long contract, big contracts, you have to have sometimes months, sometimes years of negotiation, mm -hmm. getting the right deals, um, lots of contracts, lots of lawyers, etc. This is not a simple sales process. Whenever you, you're dealing with hundreds of millions of dollars of big projects with governments and big you know, institutions, yeah. you're talking about huge red tape. And so that is something like sometimes you can't scale as fast as you'd like because it's there's it's not a technology problem by itself. It's also um, a contract sales process. A good example is um, with SpaceX is if you look think of SpaceX as purely a technology company, you miss the bigger picture, which is a lot of SpaceX's kind of revenue and budget is is determined off of sales, and their sales is a lot of it is determined by kind of a bureaucratic sales process where they have to get Government. into governments and large companies and and sometimes do months enough years of negotiating and winning over that's why actually you have Gwyn Shotwell as the COO or, yeah. or kind of this president or the, the president or the person who is heading the sales because it's such an important part and so in a similar way it's like when you turn over to Tesla Energy um yeah if you don't if, if it wasn't bureaucratic if it wasn't you know slow moving all this stuff then I Theoretically, it can go as fast as you could, but um, this stuff takes time. Um, Tesla will grow fast. It's just that they're starting from a small point, you know, and then they're growing and there's such a big market. It's going to take some time. Um, but yeah, I, I don't, I don't think that um, um, that means by any means that it's not an exciting field. I think uh, Tesla is um putting more and more emphasis. I think the next couple of years is interesting because as the Model 3, Model Y platform kind of reaches more of this plat this maturity in demand, mm -hmm. then you've got extra batteries that Tesla has and this, from the supply chain that they can now prioritize um, Tesla Energy, Megapacks, et cetera, before they start rolling out their third generation. So it could be definitely an interesting time of high growth. But the bigger picture is for Tesla to you know, really accrue trillions of dollars of value hypothetically from the energy markets. It's a long-term thing. They need to sell a boatload of energy and they need, you know, a long process to bring down prices and increase, you know, supply. Um, what's so, your it's comment exciting. about, yeah, what's your comment when you heard Tesla, uh, Elon say that it's pretty well infinity, the market could be infinity for energy. I think you touched on it earlier, which is if you're able to reduce the prices, there's going to be higher demand because energy is something that everybody needs and wants. And then once they get to energy generation from solar, solar farms or other ways to harness that, then it's like free. <laughs> the actual cost is free. And then the only cost would be the batteries to store it. Then it just changes the game, right? So what, what do you, what is your thinking about how big of a market this could actually become? Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah I've, I, I see kind of, I have some hesitancy in the sense that, you know, back in the day, people thought solar was going to be this huge kind of, I mean, it is a huge field, mm -hmm. but like solar companies and all this stuff were the best investments. And all, there, there's, there's something about, um, for example, like how much you can bring down the cost for every, let's say, doubling of production, right? You have rights law. And certain things like really benefit from rights law. Um, um, certain things are a bit slower to go with rights law. Um, and then the other thing is certain things you have technological advantages, like you have some really fundamental things about how you make your so-called solar panels that no one else can copy, et cetera. Um, see, that's, you have to, we have to ask the question, why hasn't Tesla been very successful at making solar panels? Like why aren't there just this light and head and shoulders above everyone else's, right? Um, sure, they have their solar roof, but even that is not like 
it's still a product in its you know young mm. infancy stages. So there there's a lot of um thing where not everything that Tesla touches turns into gold. Um, some things are just inherently take they take a long time. Um, they're much slower. Uh, they don't benefit as much from rights law as others. And some other places they move faster, right? And I think um, the area of software is moving the fastest with AI, with FSD. Um, eventually, with robotics, will move a lot faster. All of this stuff is is the there's not just Tesla; it's the whole ecosystem is moving fast, right? There's thousands of tens of thousands of companies providing the tools and everything to make these industries move fast. Um, but yeah, energy is is a big market, and that's why I put it as actually the third because. Um, for a few reasons. One is, I think this is more of, you know, for it to really accrue the potential, it's going to be, we're talking about some time out. We're talking, you know, it's a 2030, 2040 story in terms of the potential of trillions of dollars of market cap value, right? Um, and the second thing is, yeah, this is a, a bigger market um, than, I think, transportation. That's why I put it out on the third, third S-curve. And part of the third S-curve does assume some possibility for some energy breakthroughs in Tesla's technology for some real um, innovation and some some crazy competitive advantages that um, that only Tesla can accrue that they can really take advantage of the huge energy market so there's still a lot of execution left for this third s curve um, and um, yeah but it's interesting <laughs>